Sweden's RBS-18 anti-ship missile represents a significant step forward in the nation's coastal defense modernization efforts. As part of the larger AMFBAT 2030 initiative, the RBS-18 is intended to replace the Swedish Marine Corps' current reliance on manned portable Hellfire missiles for short-range anti-ship roles. Unlike its predecessor, the RBS-18 will be mounted aboard CB-90 combat boats, allowing for increased firepower and mobility in littoral operations. One of the major challenges in integrating an anti-ship missile onto the CB-90 is the vessel's small size. At under 16 meters in length and 4 meters in width, the CB-90 is significantly smaller than many vessels typically armed with dedicated anti-ship missiles. For comparison, MBDA's Mart MK-2N, a missile marketed for light craft, requires a minimum platform length of 25 meters. This suggests that the RBS-18 must be compact while still delivering sufficient range and striking power. The mass limitations of the CB-90, which allows for a twin launcher setup within a 1,750 kg threshold, 1,400 kg on deck, indicate that Sweden is likely aiming for a dedicated anti-ship system rather than a repurposed non-line-of-sight anti-tank missile. Technical specifications of the RBS-18 have yet to be fully disclosed, but given its intended role and mounting platform, it is expected to feature advanced guidance, moderate range capabilities, and warhead effectiveness tailored for littoral combat. The missile is likely to employ a combination of infrared and radar homing to enable high precision against small and fast-moving naval targets. Furthermore, given Sweden's expertise in electronic warfare, the RBS-18 may incorporate counter-countermeasure capabilities to maintain effectiveness against modern enemy defenses. The AMFBAT 2030 program seeks to provide Swedish Marine battalions with increased lethality and mobility by integrating advanced weapon systems, sensors, and platforms. One of its core tenets is enabling Marine forces to fight directly from their vessels without disembarking, a significant shift in doctrine. Alongside the RBS-18, this program includes the procurement of indirect fire support capabilities via shipboard mortars, as well as short and very short-range air defense missiles. Additionally, the Navy plans to acquire eight anti-aircraft guns, likely in the 30 tined LADS 173mm caliber, which has gained popularity in vehicle-mounted applications. The total investment for these modernization efforts is substantial, with the anti-ship missile contract alone valued at approximately 268 million euros, while the air defense guns account for another 166 million euros. A crucial aspect of the program is its reliance on the CB-90 platform, which, despite modifications such as the CB-90HS and CB-90HSM variants, remains an aging design. The CB-90 HSM is the most modern version but still shares the original hull design. Given its size constraints, mounting larger weapons on the CB-90 presents potential stability and space issues. This has led to speculation that the CB-90 is being used as a placeholder in procurement documents, with the possibility of an eventual transition to a new, larger vessel better suited to accommodate the full suite of weapons. When compared to regional competitors, the RBS-18's most relevant peers include the Norwegian Naval Strike Missile, NSM, and Finland's Gabriel V. The NSM, used by multiple NATO countries, boasts a range of over 185 kilometers and features sophisticated stealth characteristics. Meanwhile, the Gabriel V, integrated into the Finnish Navy's Hamina-class fast attack craft, offers advanced electronic warfare resilience and flexible targeting capabilities. While the RBS-18 is unlikely to match the range of these systems, its key advantage lies in its integration with highly mobile, shallow-draft vessels capable of rapid deployment and coastal ambush tactics. This aligns well with Sweden's asymmetric warfare strategy, which emphasizes defending the Baltic Sea littorals through maneuverable and dispersed forces rather than relying on large, concentrated naval assets. The RBS-18 is expected to serve a dual role within Swedish military strategy. Beyond traditional anti-ship duties, it could also be deployed against fast attack craft, landing vessels, and even smaller support vessels. 
the missile's potential for multi-target engagement would provide Swedish forces with a versatile, cost-effective weapon system capable of responding to a range of maritime threats. This flexibility is particularly important given the evolving security landscape in the Baltic region, where hybrid warfare, including the use of irregular maritime forces, is an increasing concern. The operational deployment of the RBS-18 will likely be focused on Sweden's key coastal and archipelagic areas. With over 220,000 islands and a highly irregular coastline, Sweden's naval forces require a missile system that is not only effective, but also adaptable to the unique challenges of fighting in confined waters. The RBS-18's integration with the CB-90 ensures that Swedish forces will be able to maneuver swiftly in the region's complex maritime terrain, using natural cover to launch ambush-style attacks against larger enemy vessels. This tactical doctrine aligns with Sweden's historical emphasis on mobile coastal defense, a concept that dates back to its Cold War-era strategies. Looking further ahead, the development of the RBS-18 could lead to future iterations with enhanced capabilities. Potential upgrades could include extended range, network-centric warfare integration, and improved resistance to electronic countermeasures. Sweden's defense industry has a strong track record of iterative improvements, as seen with the evolution of its grip and fighter jets and submarines. If the RBS-18 follows a similar path, it may evolve into a family of missiles suitable for various platforms, including larger naval vessels and even land-based coastal defense batteries. From a geopolitical standpoint, the introduction of the RBS-18 comes at a time of increasing tensions in the Baltic region. Russia's military activities, including its expansion of the Baltic fleet and the frequent probing of NATO air and sea defenses, have heightened concerns about regional security. The RBS-18, while not a game-changer on its own, represents an important step in bolstering Sweden's deterrence posture. By enhancing the striking power of its coastal forces, Sweden sends a clear signal that it is prepared to defend its territorial waters against potential incursions. Ultimately, the success of the RBS-18 will depend on its ability to balance performance with operational practicality. Its compact size and mounting on the CB-90 ensure that it remains a highly maneuverable option. But questions remain about its long-term viability, especially if the CB-90 is phased out in favor of a new platform. Nevertheless, as part of Sweden's broader efforts to modernize its Navy and Marine forces, the RBS-18 is a crucial component in maintaining the country's strategic autonomy and ability to respond to emerging threats in the Baltic region.